What's up folks, it's Dominic. Welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you being here. And today, one of my favorite videos, let's take a look at what is in my camera bag right now as a wedding and portrait photographer. Let's get into it. First up coming out of my bag is A7R3. And this is a body that I use the most. Right now what you're watching on is an A7 III. So that is my secondary body. And I just love the Sony full frame bodies right now. I think they're super reliable. They're fast. Um, they have some of the best technology in the game. We're not gonna get too much into the details of the camera, but those are the cameras that I shoot with right now. I didn't upgrade to the a7R 4 right now. I didn't like the higher megapixel count. Um, I don't want the memory boost that was needed for that. And I also didn't think that it was worth the upgrade. I didn't like, I mean, I like them, but if I, I didn't think it was worth selling this camera and moving up to the a7R 4 So, a7R 3 and mounted on this a7R 3 is actually the 17 to 28 Tamron 2.8 lens. I just picked this up and it's a great little lens. Uh, I actually sold the Sony um, 16 to 35 F4 to pick up this F 2.8 wide. And I just think it's really nice to have the extra light capabilities and shallow depth of field on a wide. But um, I really, really like this lens. I um, am gonna drop a video of comparing this to the G Master 2.8 lens from Sony. Um, but what I love about this lens the most is the size. It's really small, it's really compact, it's very, very sharp. So that's a great little lens. That is the wide that I use all the time. All right, what's next? What do we have next? What do I wanna show you next? It's Sony Planar Zeiss FE 1.450 millimeter lens. This lens is a beast. It is big, it is heavy, it is gorgeous. The bokeh on this is beautiful. The depth of field that you can get is amazing. It is tack sharp. I'm not gonna get into too much details of each piece of gear that I'm bringing out, so I'm gonna run through these really quick, but the 50 millimeter Sony Zeiss F1.4, one of my favorite lenses. Coming up next, the Sony 85 1.8, and you won't see this in a lot of uh, camera bags right now. This is the cheaper version of the 85 millimeter. There is an 85 millimeter uh, F 1.4 that Sony makes, and that is a very, very expensive lens. I'm not a huge 85 millimeter prime shooter. Um, I don't bring them out a lot. You gotta be, you gotta have a lot of room to work with these, um, and I'm shooting inside tight spaces often. Um, especially for headshots and portraits. Sometimes you just don't have the space. So I don't use this a lot and I chose to go with the cheaper version because I really do like the F1.8 lens still. Um, in comparison, there's no comparison. If you're comparing the uh, 1.8 to the Sony 1.4, that lens blows this out of the water. It is a 10 times better lens, but this was only like 400 bucks used. That lens is like close to $2,000. I think it's 1800 right now. Um, so that's a beast of a lens. I like it, but I'm happy with this 85 1.8. It does the job for me. If you're just getting started. That's a great portrait lens, headshot lens. That's a beautiful uh, lens for that price. You can't beat it. Coming up next, let's see what we got next. Ooh, a newer lens that I got. This is the, I think we go, ooh, way too excited. This is the Tamron 28 to 75 F 2.8. And this is a newer lens in the full frame. Sony lineup and I really really like this lens. I'm not a huge zoom shooter. I shoot a lot of primes um, As you will see but I really like this um, For video, it's an awesome lens for video. I also really like it for um, the flexibility Using this lens in different situations, especially throughout a wedding day um, Sometimes I don't want or don't have time to be able to pull a bunch of primes and switch out throughout the day So this gives me that flexibility a um, couple downfalls to this lens. I don't like the exterior zoom. I wish it was a built-in interior zoom. Um, you can just get dust and things in that. Uh, I also wish it was a little bit wider. It's the 28 instead of the Sony G Master 24 to 70. This is a 28 to 75, so you lose a little bit on the wide side, but that Sony G Master is to double the price as this. This was like $800 or $899. Great lens, great value for that price. Again, if you're just starting out and you're investing in Sony glass, or any system really, because you can get them for Canon and others too. The Tamron 20 to 75 is an awesome lens for that price. The value is super good on this lens. I'd pick one up. Okay, what we got next? Ooh, you're in for a treat. Come to Papa. Sony G Master 70 to 200 2.8. I'm way too into this. This is my baby. I shoot this lens a ton. 
especially at weddings. This for a wedding photographer is not a if, when, this is a must purchase. You must get this, you must invest in this. The Sony G Master especially is one of the top end 7200s, but no matter what gear you're rocking right now, you need a 7200 if you're a wedding photographer. The reason is you'll be in a lot of big open spaces, ceremonies, big churches, long aisles, receptions. And you don't wanna be right up in the couple's face, so you will need that zoom capabilities. And the 2.8 is what's gonna save your butt in a lot of low lit situations. Uh, in those churches, especially those Catholic churches that are big and gorgeous, they're always dark and always terrible lighting. So you will need the 2.8 there. The G Master does a really, really good job. It's got customizable buttons that you could change. It's got switches on the side that you can move around easily and quickly. Um, it's tack sharp. It's beautiful. It doesn't miss. A lot of times I'm trusting this with brides coming down the aisle at the big moment. And as long as that aisle is big enough, I have enough room to work with. The 7200 is my choice. So uh, get this lens. It is awesome. It is expensive. I think I got this used for like 2200, but this lens is probably 2600 brand new. Some of the other companies have them a little bit cheaper. Right now, Sigma and Tamron's actually dropping quality 7200s that I want to test out. So maybe we can take a look at those in another video. But this is this is the baby. Let's frame this up right. Stay G Master. That's that's it. That's it right there. Yeah. Also, my favorite lens in my whole kit is actually the lens that I'm shooting this video on, and that is close to this lens, actually. It is the Sony uh, 35 millimeter F1.4, and that lens is the lens that I use more than any lens on this table or in my kit completely. The 35 1.4 is my go-to lens. It's on my body 80% of the time. The reason is I really, really like the 35 millimeter focal length. A lot of people say starting out that the 50 is the best focal length for beginners and those getting into it. I disagree. I think the 35 focal length is closest to the eye and I think it's just a great focal length. Some people argue with me that the 50 is actually closer to the eye. And I think it's one eye's closed. But anyway, I digress. The 35 is my favorite lens. You can get a 35 1.8, it's a little bit cheaper, and bump that up to like a 2.2 and you'll really get a really sharp image. I love the Sony, love, love, love the Sony 1.4, 35 millimeter. Like I said, I shoot portraits with it. I love it in tight spaces. A lot of times I'll be going into weddings and the prep rooms are really small, hotel rooms or something like that, and I just can't put the 50 on. There's not enough room for me to shoot, so I'll break out the 35. I'll start with the 35 almost every time. Um, I can shoot portraits, I can shoot kids, I can shoot families. My group shots, I love the 35 for group shots. Um, I like it for dancing photos, even though sometimes I'll go real wide for dancing photos, but the 35 is just a good all around lens and it's tack sharp and I love, love, love the Sony version of it. Canon's got a really nice 35 1.2. Um, that's a beautiful lens too. So get yourself a 35. I'm gonna say get everything, but I'm a gearhead, so that's stupid. You don't need all this crap, but you do need a 35, okay. Let's get into some things that aren't really talked about now. This right here is something that I highly recommend. This is the Spyderco clip that goes on the belt mount um, for the harness for your cameras. And so what you do is you screw these on the bottom of your cameras like so, and then this little clip clips into a belt that you have on your side and holds your cameras at your side. And before I got this Spyderco belt, system, I'll call it. Um, I was always hand-holding gear. I'd have slings around me. I'd have um, camera straps around my neck and I was always cramped and hurting and uncomfortable. And I was holding things all the time and I looked disheveled. And it was a mess. I was a not hot mess at these weddings, people. Get yourself a good um, belt loop system, something. I really like the Spyderco system. Some people like the money, um, the hold fast gear, money maker straps, those are really cool looking for wedding photographers. They leave me with a really cramped neck, so I don't like them. But um, a camera strap is essential. I use the Spyderco belt company, or belt company? What the hell? Spyderco uh, belt system, for me, I like that the most. It's really convenient. It makes me feel cool with like two holsters and my camera's on my side. Um, like I'm in Boys in the Hood or something stupid. But that's a really good system. Get yourself a good camera strap. As a wedding photographer, you need to be prepared for all situations going into a reception. Um, it's gonna be dark, it's gonna be dimly lit, and it's gonna get darker as the night goes on. So you have to have lighting to be prepared for those situations. And I have found a very good way to do that, and that is 
an on-camera flash, the Godox V1 Sony Edition. And I actually love this flash. It's a new addition to my kit and I'm obsessed with it. It's basically a cheap knockoff of the Profoto A1. It's not basically, it is a knockoff of the Profoto A1. Profoto is an awesome lens, but at $1,000, I just couldn't do it. Not for a flash. Oh yeah, it's a flash, not a lens. I couldn't do it. So um, when this came out, I was super excited about it. I think it was $249. I got a couple extra spare batteries, um, which were like 60 bucks, and I got a uh, magnetic soft box, basically, that goes on the top of this, a little soft dome to soften up that light. But with this mounted on the top, um, with a little soft dome, I can get some awesome lighting for dance photos, group photos, basically anything I want. This thing is powerful enough to get me there. Now, the only time I would say I really like off-camera flash at a reception um, or in a portrait setting, something like that, is um, in a bigger room. If I need more light than basically this V1 can get, I will do an off-camera um, light similar to what I have set up here, which you can't see, which is also a big Godox LED. Um, but I will bring a strobe. Um, so my good buddies have Profoto strobes, which are awesome. They're also very, very expensive, but 90% of the time you won't need a strobe. For most, all of my weddings, I have not needed a strobe. I will bring them up for convenient purposes, but that's just because I have them. If you're getting started in weddings, um, or portraits or stuff, you can do speed lights for everything. You just gotta be knowledgeable with them. I will say, really, really important with speed lights are, are photographers are really hesitant to try different things and do different things. You really need to know what you're doing with, with light and flashes and um, flash in general. You don't have time at a wedding to sit there. You don't have a time at really any job to sit there and learn your gear. So you should know exactly how this gear works and what it can and can't do in certain situations so that when you're on the job, you don't have to think about it. You could just go. So that is my flash setup. Now, got something else to show you in terms of flash. This little piece of gear, sick. <laughs> this is the Gary Fong light dome. I think it's what it's called. Anyway, it's a dome. It's basically a soft box for your flash. It goes over the flash like so, and it's basically a soft box and softens that light um, so it's not so harsh. And it was like 50 bucks or $40, which is kind of outrageous for a small piece of plastic, but Gary Fong's a G, and he earns every cent of this. And I really, really like these, especially if you don't have the magnetic um, top that these, the Profoto and the Godox have. If you just have a regular speed light, um, these are awesome to put on top of it. I use them for every single wedding before I got this Godox. Other flash I use, I will link below because I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a cheap manual speed light flash for like 60 bucks. And I used it for every single wedding up until about six months ago um, when I picked up this Godox when it came out for Sony. Before that, I was using just a cheap manual flash. Another thing I can't go anywhere without are uh, my little notebooks. I have millions of notebooks. My wife hates it because I don't ever put them away or clean them up or anything. They're all over the place, but I love my notebooks. I love my journals. Um, I think it's really, really important to do research before you go on a shoot to know what you're shooting, where you're shooting. For weddings, I can break down what my system is and what exactly I do to prep for a wedding beforehand. I can go through that in a different video if you guys like, but um, I will say I'm taking notes all the time. I'm always jotting down ideas. I'm always jotting down um, things I need to remember. My memory sucks. So I always have to have these little journals around. I love them. I think they're a great little investment. Um, what else do I got? Ooh, I always got a small little side camera with me. Um, if I want to do some vlogging, which I probably never do, but I like having a little side camera with me. This is the Canon G7X Mark II. So that's a great little camera. Um, what else do I have? I've got some lens hoods, some spare batteries. And then of course I've got some extra batteries for everything, some ex external hard drives. I highly recommend a little case, a hard case of some sort to keep all your memory cards in. That's always essential. Um, you're looking at a big Godox light with a huge soft box on it right now that's lighting me up. Um, I'll show you that in another lighting video. I wanna do like a lighting tutorial video for YouTube because my lighting is dope. Um, but that's it basically. We got the wide 17 to 28, 35 1 4, a 50 1 4, an 85 1 8, a 28 to 75 2 8, a 7200 2 8, um, a Godox Speedlight V1, Spyderco Belt Company, I can't belt company, belt system, um, a softbox for your on camera flash. A, a third body and a little G7X Mark II. I got cameras 
galore. I'm cameraed out, I'm geared up. Folks, that's all I got for you today. This is what's in my camera bag right now. I will of course leave links to everything below to make it easier for you to read some reviews and check this gear out and see what it is you can and can't afford. If you do wanna save some money on some of this gear, you can always do an F4 for the 7200. You could go down to a 1.8 for the 35 and the 50, really great lenses. And um, you may not need to go down to the 1.4 depending on what you're shooting. Um, you could do off-camera Sigma and Tamron in pretty much all of these focal lengths and apertures and that'll save you some money too. I really like those lenses as well. I'll get into more detail in other videos to show you additional gear that can save you some money. But overall, I will say this. A lot of people put it out there that gear doesn't matter and you could shoot with whatever and as a professional you could pick up any camera and you could shoot and that is true. I could pick up any camera and any gear and take quality photos, but Gear makes it easier and more convenient and more fun. And it takes your quality of work from, say you're shooting at like an eight, it takes it up to an 11. And that jump right there is huge and will set you apart from the crowd because anyone can afford cheap gear that is trash and anyone can take those photos with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of skill. But with nice gear and high knowledge and a lot of skill, you can really stand out and that's what can set you apart. So I will never say that gear doesn't matter. I love gear, I'm a gear head, gear does matter. But I will say, don't get obsessed over it. Don't dump all your money into things that you don't need. I think that it's really important to invest in one system. Don't jump from Canon to Nikon to Sony to Pentax. <laughs> I can't even say Pentax without laughing. Panasonic or Fuji or something. Stick with one system. Try to stay within that system. That'll save you some money as you grow. And then also invest in glass first. Don't invest in a very expensive body with cheap lenses because your camera, your pictures will still not be uh, the highest quality they can. I could put a very expensive piece of glass on a cheap body and take phenomenal photos, but if you flip that around, I can't take, I'm very, very limited with the cheap, cheap glass. So glass should always be your biggest investment. It definitely is for me. So that's all I got for you today. I appreciate you being here. If you like this photo, please hit me a like, a thumbs up and comment below. Let me know what gear you guys are rocking and what you're starting out with or where you're at right now. I appreciate you guys as always. Till next time, peace. Thank you.